Hi, welcome back to 2020. Can you believe it? This is the new roaring 20s. I wonder what history will say about this decade. Will we have flapper dresses and beads and stripy suits or will we all about success in the startup world? Well, that's certainly the way we want it here at Eastern Innovation. And we're super excited to celebrate the new year with you. So you might be listening to us, being part of our team, hanging out with our community, and you're thinking about that idea, that thing that you want to take to commercialization. Well, Eastern Innovation has the program for you. We are launching Startup on Ramp in 2020. We want to know if you're interested in learning some of the tips, the tricks, the tools, and the deep underlying knowledge that will help you avoid the mistakes that many startup founders make. So if you're interested, please register with us, give us your expression of interest, and we'll let you know when the program is due to kick off later this year. This month, we've released a fabulous podcast episode with our expert in residence, Vlad Finn, and we're talking about all things mentorship. So whether you're a mentee or somebody who needs some mentoring, or whether you've been considering sharing some of your wisdom and experience, it's a podcast you won't want to miss. So we've got some great events coming up for you this month and in the following months. We have our welcome back lunch at Eastern Innovation on Monday the 20th of January. Join us for a barbecue. We've got our Eastern Vic Founders Night on the Thursday the 30th of January. Come along and meet some of the wonderful founders that are in our Eastern region. And then of course, don't forget to register for pitching for our six for six pitch night, which is Thursday the 6th of February, where you can win space or cool prizes just for pitching your startup innovation idea. Of course, we've uh, got some lunch and learns coming up for you in February, some more Vic Founders meetups, and we've got some fabulous panels coming up throughout February and March. Stay tuned so that you can register for these fabulous events. And as usual, we like to spotlight one of our incredible businesses that he's here on site in Mulgrave at Eastern Innovation. We're very lucky to have Riz Akhtar, the co-founder of Carloop. Here he is to share his wisdom. Carloop has got Australia's largest new car pricing database with over 50,000 new car prices crowdsourced from recent car buyers. It's the information that dealers don't want you to see so that you can get a good deal on the car you're about to buy. Um, and with that, we've also got other things that give car buyers the confidence so they don't feel like they're getting ripped off when they go to a car dealer to buy a new car. When we started for a couple of months, we had about 400 prices. Um, in the beginning of this month, we'd exceeded 50,000 prices that we're able to source off consumers who have purchased recent cars, as well as our own users that come and tell us how much dealers are asking for the car they're about to buy. We use technology by crowdsourcing that into a database, which then classifies each deal and where it sits across the whole of Australian car market. So we can monitor trends as to what car dealers are doing when they're giving out certain prices. Uh, we can use those trends to empower consumers, but that trend analysis wouldn't happen without us using some of the data visualization and data processing software that we use to ensure that we can empower consumers with the right information before they walk into the dealership. And what, we can, what we're sort of focusing on is putting that review evaluation process that every car buyer or buyers of any product do online but sort of put it on steroids by using machine learning and analyzing hundreds of thousands of conversations from recent owners and buyers of those cars and as well as people that went to test drive it. What were their thoughts? So before you go to a test drive it, you've got a good idea of which stage you're at. If you're at test driving, we can analyze just people that have test driven the cars and their evaluation, which is a lot better in our opinion compared to reading car reviews that may or may not be biased. There's a lot of sponsored content out there that a lot of consumers dislike at the moment because it, if you're looking at a Toyota RAV4, the reviewer that's reviewing that car, they're getting paid by these companies to do those in many cases. Um, 
And that I think is a conflict of interest where what we would like to change in the industry is to get real consumers, analyze hundreds of thousands of their comments and conversations um, and get the real insights directly to consumers so they can make an empowered, educated decision um, on buying and owning their new car. Thanks, Riz. You're just such an amazing person to be part of our culture and our business community here. We've also got Jaden from iBill. He's going to give us an expert tip on how to manage interns. Yeah, to be intern ready means uh, essentially just having a, a portfolio of your business documents ready to go, such as policies, workplace health and safety, and jumping through a few eligibility hoops that essentially um, the universities or um, internship um, agencies request from you, just uh, jumping through those eligibility hoops, being ready for that. So usually starting off with um, the classic workplace health and safety, um, just going through a, a normal code of conduct as well. Um, you can also source that information from um, general agencies um, that give you advice on those things. But usually if you just, we're, we're all startup businesses, so if you're just doing it yourself, it's always good to just, um, just go through a few templates online and start from there. Um, but you need to provide a good employability skills to that intern themselves. Um, they're all here to learn. They're here to uh, develop their own skills themselves. Um, you can't just obviously exploit that, but it's always good to harness the power of those interns for fresh new perspectives and go from there. Yeah, so there's a few different examples from our, our engineering departments or marketing departments. Um, it's usually giving a good, fresh um, scope of works ready to go. So starting off from the start, you need to understand what kind of the outcome of those works gonna be. You're not just asking the interns to get coffee for you every day. Um, you're more just going over um, really good um, case study projects that are going to benefit the company in the real situation rather than just theor theorizing it all. Internships are a great opportunity to um, see if you actually want to work with this person or what maybe you want to uh, actually employ them in the future. It's always good to uh, you know test them out every now and then to see uh, is this intern right for my company and is it something that I want to take on board to my, my business and maybe potentially as an employee. Um, it's always good to source that first. Yeah, usually it's uh, to see how, how well people can work under pressure, what they're like with uh, working with certain teams and individuals. Um, maybe get them to work on their own for a little bit, get them to work in leadership positions, maybe um, get one intern to um, you know, try and take a leadership opportunity to um, harness those other interns and their power, see what happens from there. Um, and we in the past have had a lot of success with those interns and employing them. So there is a lot of risk in regards to harnessing on some interns sometimes. Um, if you were going to just, you know, um, just take a, a random intern off the street and they've come to you, um, there's a lot of uh, things to do with uh, insurances and claims and all that. So you need to be careful with that. Having a general uh, um, insurance is, is always a good starting point, um, but sourcing interns from universities, universities give you those insurances ready to go so that if anything wrong happens such as IP or copyright issues, um, intern, yeah, sorry, the uh, universities are very good to handle those situations. Um, there is also possibilities such as IP, so intellectual property. Um, you can have a uh, non-disclosure agreement written up between yourself and the, uh, the intern themselves. Um, that's also okay too, that, uh, that's been done in the past as well. So that's it for a beginning of a very big year. The beginning of it for you, we hope a massive decade, the 20s, the roaring 20s. We'll be back for with more information, more events and all sorts of things in February. But in the meantime, we hope to see you all throughout January. Hey, and if you haven't booked your session with our expert in residence, Vlad Finn, yet, do make sure you get on and do that. You don't want to miss out. Have a great month. We'll be here. See you soon. Okay.